Happy New Year, everyone. Happy Clapping Year in Jesus' name. Amen. He looked fair. That means he will do it for you, for me, for everyone. Let me talk to our people on the other side. Bill Nushan Pai. Il Lufera Sokila Promise. He will do everything he has promised in Jesus' name. This year, the trees of the field will clap their hands. The members of his church will clap their hands. The promises of God will be fulfilled in every life this year in Jesus' name. All the things we have cried about, all the tears in his bottle, the answers to those problems, to those challenges, those answers will come. A new year. Happy, healthy, progressive, powerful, conquering. This is your year. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and bless your name for your goodness. We know that you have come to bless your people this year, and we pray beyond our prayer, beyond our expectation, beyond what you have done in the past, you will do even this year in Jesus' name. Open the windows of heaven. Open the doors of heaven and bless your people abundantly this year in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me another shouting, clapping, amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to our second Sunday in this new year, and it is a covenant Sunday. And I pray that covenant blessings will be upon every life, even today in Jesus' name. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 31, and I'm reading from verse 33. It says, but they shall be the covenant that I will make in the, with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now we're talking about contract, a contract, a covenant, they're similar. When God makes a contract or a covenant, there are two sides to the covenant. We have the side of God. He is the covenanter, covenantal. And then we have the side of his people, the covenantees. The people on those two sides, you have the document that states the promise, the performance, and what is going to happen, and the condition that you have to meet between the covenantor and the covenantee. And it states the condition there that this is what I will do. But you have a part, this is what you will do. It's like uh, the marriage covenant that the husband has a part and the wife has a part. And it is the fulfillment of those uh, covenant conditions that will bring the blessings upon us. Here God now himself 
talks about the covenant and it talks about the part of the covenanties, the people who are the beneficiaries of that covenant. And so he says, this is what I will do. In any contract, in any covenant, there's a writing so that the person making the covenant, initiating the covenant, can look at that document and say, this is what I said, and this is the blessing I said I will give, and this is your part. And so he gives us the covenant, and he says, I will write that in the heart of the people that are making covenant with me. It says, this shall be the covenant that I will make. He is the originator of the covenant. He is the one that tells us what the promises are, what the conditions are. And he says, after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. It's a covenant that makes him right. His word, his covenant, the promises, the expectations, the conditions in our heart so that every time we'll be remembering this is what he said this is what he promised and this is the expectation coming from him that we will have to do look at verse 34 there in verse 34 it says and they shall teach no more every man is neighbor why because he has written the covenant conditions and the covenant promises and the covenant precepts in our heart. He's put them on the table of our mind. And so you don't have to come and remind me. I don't have to come and remind you when that thing is written clearly in every heart. And it says, and every man is brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. He said, there'll be nobody just coming as an onlooker. There'll be nobody coming as a spectator. Everyone will know me. Everyone will be born by the Spirit of God, born again and belonging unto the Lord. And they have their hearts with the Lord and they have their minds in the Lord and they have the law of God in their hearts. It says, because they shall all know me from the least of them even to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Look at chapter 32. I was looking at verse 38. In chapter 32, verse 38, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But you understand, uh, that's not automatic. It says, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. There is a condition that he has given. It's the condition of repentance, it's the condition of restoration, it's the condition of regeneration. A new life in any man be in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new on that condition that we repent on that condition, we are restored to the original situation. Our Adam and Eve totally belong to the Lord. Before they fell, he said, they shall be my people and I will be their God. In verse 39, he tells us, and I will give them one heart. I will give all of them the same kind of heart. Think about Enoch, the same heart he had. Think about Samuel, the same heart he had. Think about Jeremiah, the same heart he had. Think about Paul Peter that laid everything on the altar and totally committed themselves unto the Lord. 
that's the same heart I will give everyone. It says, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. Then in verse 40, it says in verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, all of them. All the people that have covenant with the Lord, he'll put honor. The honor we give to the person we respect, we hallow, we honor. And the fear, the filial fear that we have towards God, and we're conscious of his honor, we're conscious of his, of his glory all the time. Because of that, we fear to offend him. We fear to contradict him. We fear to influence any other person around us to go against the Lord. In any way, we never forget ourselves because it's written in our heart. The, the value and the virtue of following after God and helping other people, encouraging other people to, uh, to fear the Lord. It says, I'll put my fear in their hearts and they shall not depart from me. They'll not be Sunday, Sunday Christians, Sunday, Sunday believers in the market. They will not depart from me. In the home, they'll not depart from me. In every action, every action of their hands, they'll not depart from me. That the covenant the Lord is making. And today, we're looking at the heart of the new covenant. The heart of the new covenant. Everything has a heart. If the heart is deformed, if the heart is weak, if the heart is unstable, if the heart is not active, doing what he taught to do, it will affect the whole body. And if the heart of the covenant is tampered with, then it will affect the fulfillment and the performance of the covenant. The heart of the new covenant. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the heart. Number two is the healing. Number three is the holiness. Number one is the cleansed heart. Number two is the confirmed healing. Number three is the crucial holiness. Point number one, the cleansed heart for the everlasting covenant. The cleansed heart. You bring your heart to the Lord. This is my son, my daughter, give me your heart. And as you bring that heart, he cleanses the heart. He purges the heart. He prepares the heart for inheriting the possibilities and the promises in the covenant. Number one, the cleansed heart in the everlasting covenant. Number two, in the confirmed healing in the new covenant. It was in the old covenant. And it comes to the new covenant and Christ has now become the sacrifice and our substitute and the one that helps us to have the healing benefit in the new covenant. Number two, in the confirmed healing in the new covenant. Number three, the crucial holiness crucial holiness that's what crucial means important it's something you cannot deal without it means essential when you say something this is crucial this is important and this is indispensable this is an essential commodity number three then is the crucial important essential indispensable holiness in the holy covenant let's come to number one now number one is the cleansed heart for the everlasting covenant let's look at that again in jeremiah reading from chapter 32 and we're looking at verse 38 in jeremiah chapter 32 verse 38 it says and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Then he tells us in verse 39, in verse 39, and I will give them one heart, the heart 
they aren't before. I have to replace that heart. All those children of Israel, and they came out of the land of Egypt, and they were going to the land of Canaan. If they had had a cleansed heart, if they had had a consecrated heart, if they had had a heart that focuses on me, not on them, not on their bread, not on their water, not on their needs, if they had focused their heart on me, they would not have perished. In the wilderness, 600,000 men that came out of the land of Egypt. And then they, those who had wives and then children, that's why we calculated the number of the people, about 3 million that came out of the land of Egypt. Just the younger generation were able to get there. Why? Because he said, I will circumcise your heart and the heart of your children so that you will love me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. They didn't take their heart to the Lord to be circumcised. And then their children, they didn't tell their children the importance and the significance of that circumcision of heart. But now he says, they couldn't enter in because their hearts were not ready. Now he says, and I will give them one heart and one way. If we have one heart, we'll have one way. If we have one heart, we'll have one passion. We'll have one path. We, because we have one heart, one vision, one decision one dedication, and we have one decision to follow after the Lord. Now, as we talk about our having covenant with the Lord, that's what he wants to do. First of all, he wants to give one heart so that you can follow one direction, so that you can have one goal, one ideal, one purpose, and you want to go that same direction that God in heaven has mapped out for us, and that Christ has described very well the narrow way that leads to glory land, and he says, I'll give them one heart. I'll give them one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. Then in verse 40, it says in verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them that I will not turn away from them. He turned away from the children of Israel and he abandoned them. He said, all right, your heart is not with me. Your heart is not for me. And they went to the land of Babylon in captivity. But now he says, I'm going to have this everlasting covenant with them that they will not turn away from me and I will not turn away from them to do them good but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. And then in verse 41, verse 41, yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart my whole heart if they follow the lord with their whole heart then god said with his whole heart he'll bless them if they bring their soul their mind everything and they're serving god without reservation all their soul all their mind all their heart if they serve him without reservation he too will bless them without reservation he says with my whole heart and with my whole soul and that's how abraham had the blessing of god because he came to god with a faithful heart he served the lord with his whole heart there was no reservation there was no looking back everything he knew you know the bible was not reaching at that time and Yet, look at Abraham. Abraham, here am I, Lord. 
take that son your only son whom you love and go sacrifice him to me it says in the mountain that I will show you and the very early morning the first day uh, the, 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 the next morning he rose up took the son without consultation without compromise without discussion and he had no servants with him and then he took the sun and laid the wood on him and he took the knife and the fire and then he went to the mountain that the Lord had chosen with all the heart, all the soul, without any reservation. And then he told those servants, tarry here, I will go yonder and worship the Lord. And we, both of us, he believed that the covenant of the Lord will not change. He had told me that through this son, it will make him a blessing to the whole world. And now he told him to sacrifice the son. He didn't delay dally. He didn't delay with all his soul, with all his heart, with all his mind. He took that son and God said, because you have obeyed me and you follow me with your whole heart, I will bless you with my whole heart. That's what he's telling. Look at Nehemiah chapter 9 and I'm reading there from verse 7. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 7. Thou art the Lord, the God who did choose Abraham and brought him forth out of all of the Chaldeans and gavest him the name of Abraham. Why? Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and foundest his heart faithful before thee. Foundest his heart faithful. You know, when you come to the Lord and you are making this a great covenant with the Lord, you must find our heart faithful. And it's out of the heart we have all the issues of life. You cannot repent without your heart going into it. And you cannot obey the Lord without your heart being totally submissive unto what God is saying. And that's what God found in Abraham, that you found his heart faithful before thee and made us a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Gagashites to give it, I say, to his seed and has performed thy words. You found him faithful in heart. And because you were faithful in the heart, you have now performed your words, for thou art righteous. In Psalm 51, reading from verse 5, that's why the Lord wants to cleanse our hearts, so that in the cleansed heart, that you have the performance of all the promises of the new covenant. It tells us here in uh, Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse 6, in verse 6 it says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Then it says in verse 7, in verse 7, Purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. For God to fulfill the covenant he had made him with David, he needed a purged heart, a pardoned heart, a purified heart, a cleansed heart. It says, put me with Esau and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. In verse 8, it says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Then in verse 9, it says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Verse 10, creating me a clean heart. That's the prayer we need to pray. We need to make sure that our hearts are clean. 
we're purged, we're purified, and we have a heart made ready for the covenant, the covenant the Lord has made. He is righteous. Our hearts must be righteous. He's so pure eyes than to behold iniquity. And he doesn't want to behold iniquity every time we come. And what are you coming for? I come to claim the covenant blessings. But look at your heart. I need to cleanse that heart. It's a creating me clean heart to God and renew a right spirit within me. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're looking at verse 6. If, if he's to fulfill the covenant, he wants to handle that problem of the heart first. And he says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. What does that mean? You know, circumcision of the flesh takes away the extra flesh you're brought into the world and uh, it's it will be a storage for bacteria bad bacteria it will be a storage for disease it will be a storage for um, you know things that will uh, disturb your whole system it goes from there to all the parts of the body now circumcision removes all that so that everything will be clear in the natural now the heart also has something it brought into the world it's called depravity it's called the Adamic nature and that Adamic nature causes problem because as Adam made excuse that nature of excuse making why did you do this excuse how didn't you do that excuse couldn't you have done better excuse how about this look at the result and the reward and the the consequence of your action excuse it came from adam and eve never going straight never telling the truth never being transparent we brought that adamic nature depravity with us in the world and we cannot you hypocritical maneuvering hanky panky what the Lord we have to be straightforward if we are going to be in covenant with the God who can see through he can see everything that anybody is doing and so he said so that your heart will be cleansed and your heart will be pure and your heart will be circumcised ready for the covenant and making with you and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed what the consequence of that to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart when that cleansing has been done, when that circumcision has been done, you will love the Lord thy God above your comfort. You love the Lord your God above your comfort so zone. You love the Lord your God above your preferences. You love the Lord your God above money, above material things, because He wants to be the one you depend upon you, you uh, dependent all the time and then it says you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live look at verse uh, verse 19 in verse 19 it says I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before thee life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see, the, the covenant is not imposed on us. No, not at all. It says you have a choice. I want to bless you. There's a personality that doesn't want you to be blessed. And that personality works with your heart. He knows what you will do that I will say, okay, my covenant is no more with you, but you have a choice. There's life, there is a death, and there is blessing, there is cause to choose life that you may live. And then he tells us in verse 20, in verse 20 he says that thou mayest love. 
the Lord thy God, with all and then that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land, which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. He expects that we will love him with our hearts, not with our head, not with our mouth, but not with words, but with action. Our action will show the thoughts of our heart, our disposition. It will be shown by what we do in our obedience to the Lord. And it is that kind of obedience that shows the cleansed heart and the, and the, and the consecrated heart and the circumcised heart for the covenant. In 1 Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 23, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above and or on earth beneath, uh, beneath. Then he says, who keepest covenant? He keepest covenant. If the covenant promises are not fulfilled in any life, in any family, in any local church, in any denomination altogether, if we are not experiencing the fulfillment, the performance of the covenant promises, the fault is not on God's side because he is the one who keeps covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Look at that all the time. You keep the covenant with the people that have a heart, a heart to follow the Lord, not just religious people who just come to worship every Sunday, but their heart is not in the worship. The new heart is not kind of instilled, created in them. You fulfill the covenant with the people that walk before thee with all their hearts. Look at verse 56. It tells us the outcome of people walking with all their hearts before the Lord. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. Remember verse 23 where read for us, these are people that are following after the Lord with all their heart. And now he says that these people, they have the fulfillment of everything God has promised. And then he said, there has not one word failed of all the good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 23 reading from verse 1 and the king sent and gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. Then in verse 2 in verse 2 it says and the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the uh, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all the inhabitants, all the citizens, everyone. And then it says, and the priests as well, and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great, both small and great. You know, everyone is involved in the covenant and each one has to take his part and he has to give his heart unto the Lord. If it's a little heart, little heart, little mouth, little hands, give yourself to me. If it's a big heart, an aged heart, give your heart to me, anyone. If it's a female heart, give your heart to me. If a male heart, give your heart to me. The Lord deals with us 
us not on the basis of gender not on the basis of age he deals with us on the basis of the heart and it says all of them small and great and he read in their ears of the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord and then in verse 3 in verse 3 it says and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments that the heart he expects it's not just you know this is a covenant Sunday covenant month and we're here and we leave our heart at home and we leave our consecration behind and we leave our commitment behind and we leave the desire the passion for holiness and righteousness we leave all that behind and then we come for covenant there's no covenant without the heart you will bring your heart with you a heart that is convicted a heart that is converted a heart that is consecrated a heart that is cleansed a heart that is totally committed and devoted unto the Lord we must bring our heart and it says they did that and his testimonies and his and his statutes with their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant all the people stood to the covenant nobody was passive nobody just said okay go ahead and uh, you know finish the preaching and when you're finished i'm here i want this i want this pray for us yes we'll pray but you know we have to go through everything and know that this is what is reaching and then we we, we uh, give our hearts and we give everything we have according to what is reaching we're looking at it Ezekiel chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 25 Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean it's God talking not Ezekiel it's not the water of Ezekiel it's not the water of a prophet it's not the water in the bottle it's not anything that human beings have taken from the river they put it in the bottle and then they sprinkle it not not at all this is the almighty God saying then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean and from all your filthiness Feel the language of that will be cleansed off, and feel the behavior of that will be cleansed off, and feel the exposure. There are people that expose their bodies. And you can see the contour of their body and uh, you know and they make other people feel defiled all that kind of feel the appearance and feel the exposure it cleans everything away that, that's what god wants to do and if you don't want to do that and you want to continue in that feel the exposure you are not ready for the covenant of the lord you are not ready for relationship with the lord it says and from all your Filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Anything you exalt above God is an idol. It might be a person, a man, a woman. You exalt him, exalt her above God. That's an idol. It might be your job, your profession. It might be anything on earth. It might be the dust and the sand of the earth, the cement of the earth. It might be property. You exalt above God. That's an idol. And God says, I'm not going to share my glory with any other person or with any property. That's why he says, as you come into a covenant relationship with you, he says, and from all your idols will lie cleanse you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and a new heart will I give you. And a new spirit. You see the heart there? is the heart of the covenant. And the heart that is made to inherit the covenant promises of the Lord. And a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And ye shall, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. God knows whether the heart is soft 
or heart. He knows whether the heart is the heart of Pharaoh or the heart of a Paul, Paul the Apostle. He knows whether the heart is habitually hardened or is permanently softened. And when he looks at you, you come and say, you have a good intention, you come to me. But you know, he acts on his word, on principle, on precept. And if your heart is hard, it says, we have to take another step before you get to the covenant. We have to remove the stony heart. And he can do that. He's the creator. He's the redeemer. And he says, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Brothers and sisters, the heart that makes the year old or new. The date crossing over from December 31st to January 1st the date does not make the year new in any way. It is the covenant of the Lord. It is the conversion of the soul. It is the cleansing of the heart. It is the recreation of the heart that makes any period, any year, any time, any period of your life new. If you have the same old disobedience, the same old hardness, the same old unbelief, the same old self-will, and you carry the self-will from December 31st through to the crossover service, and then you launch on January 1st, on, in January, the first month of the year, and the same unbelief, the same disobedience, the same disregard for the word of God, the same old habit now that you carry to what we call New Year. You know, the, the thing keeps on moving. You have a vehicle, and you put the old kind of dirty fuel into the tank although it's new year but the vehicle does not know date all it knows about the kind of fuel you put in there and if you run on that same old fuel you're going to have the same the same result as you had in the old year that's why god said the very first thing in the heart of the covenant and he says a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh somebody will shout amen Look at verse 27. In verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you. He wants us saved, verse 25. He wants us sanctified, verse 26. He wants us filled, immersed, enveloped, empowered, baptized in the Holy Ghost, verse 27. And he says, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high from on high if you have the same plastic attitude and the same heart that will not wait upon the lord so that you can renew your strength if you have the same hurry 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 and you are not ever waiting before the Lord to be baptized and filled and immersed and enveloped and empowered with the Holy Ghost, the same weak life you lived in the previous year, the same weak life you live today in the new year. But it says, wait, wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not faint and shall walk and not be tired. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them look at verse 36 in verse 36 i'm reading from the second part there the last line it says uh, 
I have uh, I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it I the Lord have spoken it I'll give a converted heart a cleansed heart a consecrated heart and a circumcised heart I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it okay the Lord will do it I fold my hand I say God I'm waiting you are not praying you're not seeking, you're not searching your heart, and you're not doing what ought to be done, and you just say, I'm waiting. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I have promised it. Why are not sinners saved? Who oh, they say God has promised salvation? If He wants to save me, let Him save me. They are not kneeling down. They are not standing up. They are not repenting. They are not forsaking their sin. They are not believing on the Lord. Why are many believers not sanctified? And the Adamic nature is not taken away from them. And they go from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, from year to year, with an unsanctified heart, uncircumcised heart, because they are not asking. They say that you know Christ has provided it and Christ has prayed and you know will be sanctified they're not praying that as you can tell it's not everybody that lives the sanctified life although they say Christ they believe in sanctification as a doctrine they believe that Christ has provided but they are not asking why are people not baptized in the Holy Ghost? Oh, God has said that you know, I will fill you, I'll baptize you of the Holy Ghost, I'll put my spirit within you. But they are not asking why is it, you know, a church that has believed the you know, salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism for nearly 50 years? Why are the majority of the members and the workers and the people, why are they not filled with the Holy Ghost? They say, God. God has promised it, uh, Jesus only, uh, Jesus ever, Savior, Sanctifier, Baptizer, the coming King, and they sing it every time, but they never pray about it. That's why the power is not there. He says, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them, and I will increase them with men like a flock. This year will be different. The year of praying. And that amen is low. A year of consecration. A year of new life. A year of total commitment unto the Lord, all our soul, all our mind, all our heart, everything that we have, and want to forget the old year and come to the new year with fresh kind of passion and desire and consecration and seeking after the Lord, praying until he does what he has promised, it will happen in Jesus' name. It tells us in First John chapter 1, reading from verse 5. First John chapter 1, we're reading from verse 5. It says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all look at verse 6 verse 6 says if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth then in verse 7 it says but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another fellowship with one another what does that mean? Like we're sitting down, there's no fellowship, and just sitting down, quiet, we're not talking with anybody, that's right, in service we don't talk with people, and we're not, um, you're particularly thinking of anybody, it's not fellowship, I'm going to the fellowship, I'm going to the fellowship, I don't think so, the fellowship is when your heart is considerate of him, your mind is considerate of her. You're not thinking of personal self-satisfaction. You're thinking of, how can I bless him? 
How can I be a blessing to her? How can I cheer her up? How can I fulfill, be a part of her dream, to fulfill her dream? How can I show him, show her that somebody is here for you? I know your passion. I know your desires. I know everything you are thinking about, or maybe some of them. And I'm here to fulfill part of the goal that you have. That is fellowship. But when we just sit down, we're not concerned what happens to him. We're not concerned what happens to her. We're not concerned whether he's hungry or not. She's hungry or not. She has a problem or not. We're not concerned about that. We are so self-centered. Although we're in the midst of the people and we're sitting down together, we're not thinking of them. Their joy is not our joy. And we're not contributing anything to the progress of our life, progress of his life. There's no fellowship there. But then if we say, we have fellowship with one another. It says if we walk in the light, as see is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us, cleanses us from all sin. I pray this year there will be fellowship in our church. Fellowship. Fellowship. You'll know the person living next door. And when he's thirsty, hungry, sick, depressed, unhappy, having a challenge of pressure upon him, upon her, you will know about it. And the fellowship you give them, what it takes to solve their problems, then we will know we are a church in fellowship. Amen. Point number two now, point number two is the confirmed healing in the new covenant. The confirmed healing in the new covenant. The Lord is always interested in our body. He's interested in our spirit, in our soul, in our body. Why? Because our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, I will dwell in you. I will walk in you. That's why he's interested. Our body is not just like, okay, it's not important whether I feed the body or not. That's not important to God. It's important whether um, I keep the body clean and clear of everything that is destructive maybe he's not interested he's interested because of the value he places on our body after all the body is the creation of God and when it gets sick he's interested that the reason he has included the promise of healing and the performance of that healing in the covenant he has made. Look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 12. It says, Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God. You are born again, the Lord thy God. You have given your heart to him, the Lord thy God. You have chosen the way of righteousness and the way of life is the Lord thy God. If you are not born again, yes, it's your creator, but it's not your redeemer. It's your creator, but it's not the Lord thy God. Because you are going to live far away on the other side if you die as a sinner. But when you give your heart to the Lord, he goes to prepare a place for you. He says, he belongs to me and he will live with me forever. So is the Lord thy God. And it says that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers. What's the covenant? What do we have in the covenant? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. How many kinds of sicknesses? How many? All sickness. And will put them, will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. 
but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Look at Psalm 89, reading from verse 34. In Psalm 89, verse 34, my covenant will I not break. If there's any uh, thing broken in the covenant, it's not his side, it's your side. That you're looking away the other direction and you're not keeping to the terms of the covenant. It says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my leaves. It said, did I say I will heal? Did I say I will not put any disease upon you which you find upon the Egyptians? Did I say that you will not have the diseases of the world on you? Yes, that's my promise promise and that's my covenant and my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips verse 35 in verse 35 it says once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David somebody say amen, amen. what's your name once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto mention your name now it will not lie to you the promise he has made is there every time and if you go to God in prayer and you say here am I what's your name you mention your name why are you here I belong to God, I'm born again I'm a child of God and I know you will not lie unto me Disease will not be in my body. Lord, heal me. Healing will come immediately. We're looking at Psalm. We're looking at uh, Exodus chapter 15. Uh, and we're reading from verse 26. Exodus 15. Uh, we're looking at verse 26. And said, if thou wilt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Is the Lord, it will heal you in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's look here at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, in Psalm 103, reading from verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, the soul that is pardoned, not having guilt, not having condemnation, not having confusion, not having negative, negative thoughts, can easily praise the Lord. That soul is positive. That soul is passionate. And that soul is praising the Lord every time. And because this psalmist now has been pardoned, has been purged, has been purified, has been cleansed, and has been converted, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Then in verse 2, it says, In verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. In verse 3, it says, Who forgets? Give it all thine iniquities and heal it all thy diseases. That's what he will do for you. All diseases, all infirmities, everything gone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, he tells us about the mercy of the Lord and the covenant of the Lord. It says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. What he did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and what he did for David, and Samuel, and Jeremiah, the rest of them, what he did in Isaiah, and what he did in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, it says the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. 
upon them that honor him, upon them that reverence him, upon them that by action, by lifestyle, they hallow his name and his righteousness unto children's children. Look at verse 18, in verse 18, to such as keep his covenant. He forgives, he heals, he brightens your life, he renews your life like that of the eagle for those that keep his covenant and to remember that his commandment and to remember his covenant and to do them. Look at Psalm 105. I'm reading from verse 8. In Psalm 105, verse 8, he has remembered his covenant forever. And the end of the world has not come yet. This is part of that forever. And he has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath were unto Isaac. Verse 10. In verse 10 he says, and he confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel Israel for an everlasting covenant. Look at verse 37. Here is part of the covenant, and he remembers that forever and ever he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. I need a good, good amen there. That Think about, think about this, that all our branches, all our groups, all our churches, local churches, in every local government, in every region, in every state, think about all our members, in all the churches everywhere. If we could say the same thing, that we come into covenant relationship with the Lord and the boys and girls and the teenagers and the young people and the young professionals and the fathers and the mothers and the bachelors and the spinsters, everyone, if we can say there was not one feeble person among their tribes. It will happen. God is a faithful God and God is a God who fulfills promises when we love him and when we honor him with our obedience, our soul, our mind, our heart. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And we're reading here from verse 4. It says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5 in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. If we all together, if we're healed, I am healed. With his tribes, I am healed. The Lord confirmed that in every life in Jesus' name. We're coming to Matthew chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 16. It says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits. He cast out the spirits with what? With his word. And healed how many? All that were sick. Look at, look at this. They brought unto him all that was sick and possessed with devils. Now he wants to pray. And somebody goes apart. And Peter goes to him and says, the Lord is going to pray now. The fellow, and then Peter said, why are you standing alone by yourself? No, I'm not. I don't want prayer in the crowd. You are his disciple, apostle, take me to him, personal. If he can 
deal with my case personally, I'll be all right. How about this one he wants to do for everybody? Uh -uh, that's for them. You see, there are people that they do not understand that they don't have to have a personal, individual, isolated touch that that same prayer must reach you today. Yeah. Whatever is the challenge in your life, he brings healing. It's part of the covenant. It's part of what he has said he will do. So you don't have to, you know, go apart and say, no, that one is not for me. When he finishes, moderator, group pastor, tell him his daughter is waiting here and crying here. How about this prayer now? I say, you tell him. He knows me. He knows my name. I'm his daughter. I'm his son. Why don't we obey the scriptures? They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all. Praise the Lord is coming your way today. Yeah. Healed all that were sick. You know, that is the way we've done it every time. Because that follows the pattern of Jesus, the Lord will do it for you. Yeah. Many years ago, some years ago, some time ago, when I said many years ago, I think it's long, long ago, we went to South Africa. And that night, I was not the person preaching. It was another person preaching. And all of a sudden, the light went up. He didn't even have light, electric light, to do his preaching. And he had candles in their hands. And I was there because I didn't have any program that night. And, you know, our overseer said, they have a meeting this way to know what South Africa looks like and how they have their meetings. Can we go? So of course, we can go. And so we were there. Somebody preached. And the fellow that preached then just told the people, he didn't tell me ahead of time, he just told the people, eh, Pastor Kumoyi is here today and I've given you the word, he will come and pray for you now. I thought, look at this one, why did he tell me before, you know, beforehand? But you know, the power will always be with you. The anointing will always abide in your life. Our overseer that followed me that day will remember what I'm saying now as he hears this, you know, preaching going on. I think it's a way too part of, uh, uh, part of uh, Johannesburg or so. And then I got up there and I said, you know, somebody there, he should have gone for operation. Actually, he came from America because, uh, you know, his father is a writer of a popular book that Christians read almost in every country. And he came to survey South Africa so that um, they will see how to establish their work, their ministry in South Africa. He was in the meeting that night. And then I said, that person there uh, that has this problem in the hand, you should have taken that problem for operation, but you were afraid. Raise up your hand and you're going to be healed now. I wasn't prepared for that. And then I prayed and immediately, instantaneously, he was healed that night he called his father in America I said daddy something has happened he was afraid to go for operation because his senior sister had gone for similar operation before and had problem and challenges because of that he was afraid but it was a visible kind of uh, difficulty and challenge in the hand healed completely he called the father and then mentioned my name so the father got interested and you know i was in america and then he happened to be in the hotel where i was and he just met me and he said are you pastor so and so i said yes i am he said my son got a miracle in your meeting in south africa and uh, from that time uh, they now invited me into the programs they were having and the Lord has been walking. If the Lord can walk like that, that night, you today, you got it in Jesus' name. And so still in South Africa, we were there and, um, you know, a pastor 
a black, um, you know, black man like myself now, uh, he, they had a challenge in their church. These twins, uh, you know, twins, uh, maybe a boy and girl or whatever, they were having spiritual problem. That the twins will have a personality. They will not see the personality. He'll be cutting them with bleach and will be uh, pinching them with uh, pins. And everybody could see the mark. They didn't see the hands doing it, but they saw all the marks, everything. And when it's freshly done, they'll see the blood coming out. And the children, those two, they'll be crying. And they didn't know what to do. It was a spiritual problem. And I happened to be in South Africa at that time. And then they called me and they said, uh, you know, these twins have uh, this problem while ministering in their church uh, that night. And, uh, you know, I prayed for those twins. And I said, those evil spirits and evil powers uh, tormenting the children tonight at uh, the last night. Don't come here. Don't touch them anymore. Finished. I want somebody to shout, finished. And then the following day, the pastor was so excited. Those simple spirits, pinching them, cutting them like that. That was the end of it. And I say that this year, and this January, all those tormenting spirits and tormenting powers in your life, finish in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17 here. In verse 17, it tells us, it said, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses gone from your life gone from your parents gone from your children gone you will not lose your wife prematurely and you will not lose your husband prematurely gone in Jesus name First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You are healed in Jesus name. Point number three now. Point number three, the crucial holiness in the holy covenant. Crucial, essential, important, indispensable. Nothing, nothing is not a thing you can do without. You cannot do without this. It's a crucial, essential, important, indispensable holiness in the holy covenant in luke chapter 1 reading from verse 72 luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant verse 73 the oath which is where to our father Abraham 74 it says that he will grant unto us unto me unto me that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear no enemy will stop your progress that dream the Lord had given you. No enemy will stop it or frustrate it in Jesus' name. That he might deliver us from our enemies and that will serve him without fear. Somebody say amen. amen. Many things in our lives we have the calling to do. I'll do this, I'll do this. Sometimes it's a dream, a vision, 
a project you had had from your younger days. And I also want to move on and get that done. Fear. And people say, what's he trying to do? We who came before you have not done that you want to do that. How can? Other people say, where are you going to get the resources? And because you fear you might not have the resources, then you search all for a lower thing. I know I cannot do that. Why not? Why not? Those who are doing it, what do they have? If they are Christians, they have God, you have God. And so this year, you will fear nothing in Jesus' name. Some people remain in that little box where circumstances of life have boxed them up. And they cannot break the bonds, shatter all the things that bind them. And they remain there in that box. You'll come out of that box. There are things that can only be done outside that little box where you are. There are things that can only be done outside the comfort zone where you are. But fear will not allow people to come out of the comfort zone. I've never done that before. I've never faced an enemy like that before. I've never faced an opposition like that before. And so they remain where they were. And they carry that old heart, old concept. They don't believe that their progress depends on God, God alone, the covenanter, and them, the covenantee. They believe that although God promises this, although God promises that, but this enemy is so greater, more powerful than God, even if God wanted me to, if they don't want me to, what can I do? That's the problem. The fear of man, you are coming out of that this year. It says that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Your helpers will come. The finance will come. Your protection is secured. Your life will be long enough to fulfill that dream in Jesus' name. Cast out the fear out of your mind. You will get there. Look at verse 75. In verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Can we be holy today? If we have the grace today, can we have the same grace tomorrow? Can we have the grace the following day? Can we be holy for one week? Yeah. Can we be holy for one month? The grace we enjoyed one day, three days, one week, one month. Can we enjoy the grace for the next month? And so... If one will say a lifetime, a lifetime is one day at a time. And so a life of holiness is holiness one day at a time. A day of, a day of faith and a day of progress is, uh, you know, a life of progress is progress one day at a time. A day of faithfulness, a life of uh, faithfulness and fearlessness is one fearless day at a time. You don't need to worry about tomorrow, about next week about next year one day at a time you live without fear one day at a time you live above and beyond all your enemies why are you saying amen like you don't know one day at a time one day at a time over there the right one step at a time and if you can have that's what i'm reading before me there if you can have one step at a time one day at a time holiness will be the lot of your life 
Uh, we're coming to Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Gonza died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Then in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with, uh, with twain he covered his face, and were twain, he covered his feet and were twain, he did fly. Verse 3, and in verse 3 it says, And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is, uh, is full of thy glory. In verse 4, he tells us, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and uh, the house was filled with smoke. Then in verse 5, uh, here comes I say, and then said, I woe is me, uh, for I am uh, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, the Lord will cleanse your lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen uh, the King, the Lord of Falls. And then in verse 6 it says, And then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a light coal in his hand, which he had taken uh, with tongues from off the altar. Then in verse 7 it says, And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. The Lord will touch your lips, will touch your tongue will touch your heart and then it says and thine iniquity is taken away he had been a prophet and god cannot use a sinner who had not been converted as his prophet as his mouthpiece he was saved but now when he saw the glory of god and the holiness of god he cried unto the lord he said that original lip original nature original language is still here with me and i dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips and then god commanded and the angel came and took a coal live coal and touched his leaves and said your iniquity is taken away it was done for him it will be done for you and thy sin purged and then in verse 8 the Lord said also I had the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us then said I here am I here am I Converted, here am I. Consecrated, here am I. Cleansed, here am I. Purified and purged, here am I. I forget the old life of uselessness. I come now, this year will be a profitable year. All around in your life, serving God, serving, the, serving in the church, serving outside the church, serving everywhere, you can come and say, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, purge me, Lord, purify me, Lord, take the Adamic nature away, change my view, change my language, change everything within me. Here I am now available, here am I, send me, and the Lord will use you mightily this year in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35, we're looking at it from verse 4. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. The Lord sent me to tell you, this year, be strong. In your heart, be strong. In your mind, be strong. If your enemies are strong, you must be stronger. If your enemy is stronger than you are, they'll almost trample on you every time. They'll almost push you down every time. If your enemies are stronger than you are, they will impose their negative attitude on you. And you'll just be there trembling. But this year, you'll be stronger than your enemies. You'll be stronger than your persecutors. Now, if your enemy is stubborn, 
you must be stubborn too towards him. You see, you were after me last year. You were after me after me the, the other year. You were after me three years ago. And actually, many things I should have done, I didn't do because you are after me. And, and they, don't, they don't recognize your crime. They don't recognize your fearfulness. They don't recognize your weakness. They don't recognize pleading and begging. They are just stubborn. Now, this year, you must be more stubborn than your enemy. You will succeed this year. You will climb that mountain this year. And the Lord says, be strong and fear not. It's fear that crushes us. And then we're not able to achieve what the Lord has raised you. Why are you alive? Why are you alive at this age? If you're not supposed to do something, where would God keep you alive and tell you, I'm not taking you home now, stay there. And then what he's told you to stay there for, the fear of a little person there, the fear of an unsafe person there, the fear of a backslider there, will not allow you to do what you are saying here, what God is keeping you here to do. You break that yoke this year. Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. He will save you from their hands. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And then in verse 6, it says, Then shall the lame man leap as an hatch, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall the waters, shall the waters break out and streams in your desert. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty and uh, land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes then in verse 8 it says an highway shall be there a way it shall be called the way of holiness What's an highway for? It's an highway is for you to move, uh, you know, to run on, to take your car on. It, the highway is to take you from where you are to the place you are going to be. And you say, for you this year, there will be a way. It shall be called the way of holiness. What makes us to have and to get to the place we ought to get to, even earlier than we thought we'll get, is the way, the highway, is the highway of holiness. What makes us to achieve what we want to achieve earlier than we thought we'll achieve? It is the way. It says it will be the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, and it shall be for, th for those uh, it says, the wayfaring men, no fools, shall not err daring. Your life will follow the way of holiness this year. In your business, your walk on the way of holiness. In your interaction with people, the way of holiness. In achievement and making progress, it will be the way of holiness in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, no lion shall be there. He's talking about those, you know, they put on anger and fury and they're very, very wrathful. You know, if you are in the market and you are always angry, always angry, you lose your customers. 
if you are you know befriending somebody you are interacting together always angry angry you will lose the friend if you're in courtship and every time you come together a little thing always complaining 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 angry and angry and every time that that courtship can break if you are in marriage and you know angry angry and angry like a lion every time you create an atmosphere of fear that the people who are living with you your husband your wife uh, although as a christian you will not divorce she will not divorce but she'll be very careful how you relate together there'll be no love in the family that's why whatever you are doing and wherever you are this year you want to remember what are you angry about why don't you walk in the highway of holiness that will lead you to where you ought to get when you get there in good time in jesus name and if you are a pastor, you know, all the time, last year, the previous years, angry and angry and angry every time. You're angry with the children, you're angry with the youth, you're angry with the men and the women, you're angry with everybody, you're angry with the workers. Now, you have not made progress in such a church. Let all that anger go away because no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous bee shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Joy this year. Happiness this year. Yeah. Have you noticed people generally in January, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. By the middle of the month, they stop saying Happy New Year. By the following month, it's sorrowful New Year, unfortunate New Year, heaviness of heart New Year. But for us, for you, This year, all through the year, happy, healthy, joyful, prosperous, progressive, year in Jesus' name. Uh, look at, look at Obadiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Everything of your possession, they have taken away from you, is the year of possession. The people of God shall possess their possession. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 22. Romans chapter 6, verse 22. But now, be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness you'll bear the fruit of holiness and the end everlasting life we're looking at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind renewed in the spirit of your mind in verse 24 it says and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness there will be no fake holiness in our lives this year in Jesus' name. In Hebrews 
chapter 12, reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, was so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Amen. Now, if you have discovered in your personal life that you are having a challenge with sugar, I'm using it as an illustration. And because of the much sugar in your system, you have what is called sugar diabetes. And then the doctor told you, you know what? You're obese, that's one. Then you're having diabetes, type 2, type whatever. And then you have this challenge. This challenge. You need to cut off sugar from your diet. Because you're used to sugar, sugar, sugar in everything. And now you say, okay, I must not take sugar. But you leave the sugar in the fridge. You leave um, things that would spark up that sugar diabetes there every time. And then you're eating. And you're looking through the glass of, uh, you know, where you put all that. And you have to squeeze yourself and you have to hold yourself. And your mind is saying, put a little there. No, no, I must not do that. But you leave that thing where you can see the sugar every time. You know what? You will soon go back to that sugar, just this once. And then, after that, just this once. After that, the whole habit will come back. And yet you know that this sugar diabetes is destroying your life. But you put the sugar and the sugary things where you can see it every time. What do you do? You remove every kind of sugary thing and the sugar, even honey. You remove all that from your sight. You remove leaven from your houses where you will not see even any type of leaven at all because you, must, you are told yes the blood is there and when i see the blood i will pass over you it become but you have the condition to fulfill that leaven must not be there what i'm saying is if you're going to possess your possession and you are going to have this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. All these sins that beset you in the previous years, that you vowed, you consecrated, you prayed, you cried, I will not go back to that thing again, but that thing is always before you in your sight. And the things with which you do all that, everything is still available. You'll go back to that. What you do, take the lemon away, take the sugar away, and take the object of temptation away totally and completely, then it becomes easy for you to do what the Lord is saying. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, get rid of them, every weight, and the sin would does so easily beset us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and Dealt the cross. Don't look at the cross. Look at the joy that is set before you. Don't look at the trial and the difficulty and the pressure. Look at the outcome and look at the better life you are going to have in the future. That's what to concentrate on. It says, uh, he, he, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You will climb up this year in Jesus' name. Yeah. Higher, yeah. greater, yeah. purer will be your achievement in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Uh, look at what takes us to heaven. Look at verse 20, uh, Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, follow peace with. Follow peace with. Follow peace with. You know, our problem is, yes, I'm going to follow. I'm a man of peace, but Mrs. So-and-so never. She likes to fight, and I'm in the mood of fighting with her. I'm happy without her. I look nice without her. I'm gentle without her. But when she comes, and then she has that, I follow the law in physics. Every action demands a reaction. And because you are following physics, you are not following God, you are not following the Bible, you don't know how to let the action go. You must have reaction. You must have a response. You must reciprocate. He said that. He frowned at me. And then I know the, what she used to do. When she wants to start a fight, okay, I'm ready. No, don't be ready for evil. I am not ready for evil. I said I'm not ready for evil. <laughs> Actually, um, you know, we were at school, we were in the boarding house. And then a teacher was passing by. And then one of the students said, he is fighting. The teacher turned back, no, one person does not fight. It takes two to fight. Am I talking to somebody there? It takes how many to fight? If somebody initiates a fight, starts a fight, and wants to, you know, begin a fight, he cannot fight except to respond. It takes two to fight. This year, whoever starts the fire, that fire will go down. Because you will not fight. Say, I will not fight. You are not fighting Jesus' name. It's easy to follow peace with all men because if they start a fight, if they start a quarrel, if they start opposition, you will not allow reaction to follow their action. Amen. Follow peace with all men and tell me Tell me, tell me, tell me as if that is your life this year. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. But this year you will see the Lord. In prayer, you will see the Lord. When you are in need, the Lord will show up. When there is any problem, you will see the Lord. And when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them to be with the Lord in the air, you will see the Lord. When Satan knocks at the door, you will not see Satan, you will see the Lord. When sickness comes and it appears that sickness will take your life, sickness will not have the final say, you will see the Lord. Every crossroad, every challenge, every situation, every time there is something that will have swallowed you up, the Lord will show up. You will see the Lord. Where are you? Happy day. Happy Sunday. Happy week. Happy prosperous year for you. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. The way is open before you to succeed like you have never succeeded before. You can rise up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, here we are today, here am I today. I thank you for your promises. I thank you for everything you have provided for me this year. I will see the Lord. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, the heart in the everlasting covenant. He makes a covenant with us, but he wants our heart to be cleansed, to be converted, 
to be purged, to be purified. Where do you stand? Why don't you say, Lord, I come, Lord, I come, Lord, I come, and let him touch your heart and let him cleanse your heart and let him sanctify your heart and let him take away that stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh a life that you live like Christ this year you don't recognize any tempter you don't recognize any temptation you don't recognize any trial you don't recognize any mundane thing on earth your heart is centered on God a cleansed heart for the everlasting covenant. Come to the Lord, come to the Lord and say, Lord, give me a new heart this new year, a new life this new year, a new disposition this new year, a changed heart, a changed heart. I will pour the clean water upon you, sprinkle the clean water upon you, and you shall be clean, O oh Lord, from the inside, my spirit, my soul, my mind, my heart, make me clean make me clean oh lord give me a fresh fresh taste experience of that heart that knows no evil that thinks no evil that uh, that projects no evil a heart that is fully completely given unto you a heart like thine a heart like thine a heart like thine a heart like thine let him do it let him do it a changed heart a cleansed heart a circumcised heart a, a kind of heart that is like that of christ that he takes the adamic nature away the depravity away he takes everything that is defiled away from your heart away from your inner life and that then your outward life will be pure will be righteous before the lord tell the lord tell the lord he knows when we really want something and when you want this with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and say lord a clean heart oh god a clean heart oh god a cleansed heart oh god a circumcised heart oh god let him do it let him do it. real real heaven saint sanctification let him give it to you that your heart and your life, everything is now laid upon the altar. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Bring that heart to the Lord and let your heart fear him. Let your heart honor him. Let your heart hallow his name. Let your heart respect and reverence him. And let your heart follow after the way of the Lord without diminishing, without adding. Let your heart be totally at the altar for the Lord this new year. Lord, do it. Sanctify, purify, consecrate, circumcise. Let the Lord do it. And now if you have entered the new year with, uh, he with healing, with a sickness, let the Lord give you a confirmed healing. A confirmed healing. It's in the new covenant. He said, I will not bring upon you all the diseases that are brought upon the world. Upon the world. He wants you to be totally free from all the sicknesses of Egypt, all the sicknesses of the world, all those terminal diseases, all those painful diseases, all those hereditary diseases, all those things that had been in the family or that you came from, but now born again now born again, now a real child of God. And he says, you are mine and I'm yours and I make a covenant with you and you'll have the healing of the Lord and you'll have perfect health, good health, long life without the old age diseases that just bring people down and they are bedridden. He says that you will not have tell the Lord, tell the Lord and if uh, any disease is there today, any infirmity there today, tell the Lord I lay it down here. 
I lay it down here. This sickness, this infirmity, this disease, this torment, this oppression will not follow me home. Lay it down there. Lay it down there and say, Lord, here am I. You promised that my health will spring forth speedily. Do what you have said, Lord. It's a covenant-keeping God. But then he gives us the condition. He says we must follow his way, obey his word, and walk in his statutes. And as you do that, he has promised he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. Stand on those unfailing promises and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. From the top of the head to the tip of the toe, Lord, heal me and keep me sound, delivered, free, healthy, and give me dominion over everything that had waged war against my life. Heart cleansed, healing, confirmed, holiness crucial. Tell him, as he sanctifies you and he gives you a new heart that now will be able to live like he wants us to live and with all men no matter how difficult they are no matter if they want to start a fight every time they see you you will not react to their acts holy 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 is the Lord through and through. And he wants to have your nature, your life, your character, your behavior. Holy, tell the Lord. Can't you be holy today? Yes, you can. You can be. Take all those attracting, distracting, sugary, diabetes calling, causing, diabetes maintaining, weakening your spiritual life. Take all that away. I say, Lord. I'll not put an object of temptation before me and I will live the life of holiness following the inner inward experience of holiness holy at heart holy in the mind holy in your disposition Holy in your character, holy in your behavior, holy in your thinking, holy in your planning, holy in your interaction. Interaction with men, interaction with women, interaction with friends, interaction with casual people, community people. Holy, holy language, holy lifestyle, holy behavior, holy desires, holy interaction. Holiness in everything and holiness in every way. Holiness unto the Lord. Your watch word and song. Holiness unto the Lord. Your lifestyle and character. Holiness unto the Lord. Day after day, week after week, year after year. Following peace. Peace, peace with all men and holiness in the private, holiness in the public, holiness continually, holiness without which 
no man shall see the Lord. Holy, holiness unto the Lord. It's in your hand. You can make this year a happy year, healthy year, hopeful year, definite change, definite life transformation, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength all year round. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy, healthy, Holy people, in Jesus' name we pray. I pray that every promise we have read, every word we have heard, will be reproduced in every life this year in Jesus' name. That from today, from this week, from this month, henceforth, your life will have a positive, powerful, practical, turning around in Jesus' name. Where is he? Where is she? What's your name? Let heaven hear your name. What's your name? That name will be blessed this year. Whatever you set your hand upon this year, the Lord will prosper and bless. No doubting this year. No unbelief this year. No backward walk this year. No tears this year. No sorrow this year. No defeat or downfall this year. Your name in heaven will be there before you to receive every promise the Lord has given. What are those blessed hands? Father, in Jesus' name, we come with new faith, new expectation, new vision new light new understanding we come with new assurance that this year for your son there for your daughter there for your children all over lord i pray this will be a blessed new year in jesus name all the blessings you have given in the past multiply those blessings and give everyone this year in jesus name the cleansing of the heart thank you lord thank you lord it is done in jesus name the blood of jesus that washes whiter than snow apply each on every heart apply each on the inner man Apply all it on the inside soul, spirit of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. In Jesus' name, we believe it is done. And Lord, our bodies are your temple. We're asking that this year, in the day, in the night, you keep us from evil and you keep evil away from us in Jesus' name. Keep sickness, disease away from us and keep us away from disease and sickness in Jesus' name. 
you told Ezekiah that his time was up in the old covenant and Ezekiah in the old covenant said Lord but I'm not ready to go yet and then without his asking for any number of years you gave him 15 more years to live in health to live in joy, to live in happiness, and to do what he still felt he had not done at the point of calling him to come to the great beyond. Lord, I pray for everyone here, everyone online, everyone everywhere. I pray any disease that will cut short their lives, take it away in Jesus' name. That long life that you have promised us and you said will live you give us long life and you will show us your salvation i pray for everyone brothers and sisters men and women i pray those who are hearing the sound of my voice anything that will cut their life short take it away from everyone in jesus name the curse of an enemy the curse in any family the curse for anyone because of this because of this because of that the curse had come and the sick getting sick every year and getting sick every time i pray lord lift up the curse from everyone break the yoke from every life and lord you are the present healing God. And I pray that the present healing and the perpetual healing will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray you confirm your blessing of healing and deliverance and dominion and prosperity on everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, your, your plan is that everyone that comes to you through your only begotten son will be saved, will be sanctified, will be healthy, will be holy. Lord, I pray that those who have been struggling before this year, struggling will come to an end. And those who have not been enjoying your peace in their heart, in their soul, in their mind, in their life, in their family, I pray that your peace will come to them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, a life of security, a life of serenity, a life of peace, a life of rest of mind. Give to everyone in Jesus' name where the fire is burning in any family unhappy and uh, quarrelsome and all that and they are at one another's necks there is apartation there is fury there is anger there's revenge there's reaction lord i pray solve all those problems in all the families even today in jesus name you're going out there'll be peace you're coming in there'll be peace in your profession there'll be peace in your possession those who are fighting against you because of your possession lord i pray there'll be peace in jesus name in your interaction in your fellowship in your in your intimacy in your family there'll be peace in jesus name and Lord, I pray holiness in everyone. Holiness by everyone. Holiness in our lives. Holiness in our heart. Holiness in all our endeavors in Jesus' name. And the grace and the strength to stand uncompromisingly in holiness. Grant everyone in Jesus' name. This year, Lord, do something in every life that everybody will know this is a different year joyful happy hopeful progressive for everyone confirm it lord in every life in jesus name we pray and the happy joyous clapping people say amen